In my experience, most churches sabotage their own announcements with chaotic communications, but it doesn't have to be this way. In fact, there is a proven church announcements formula that works and inspires churchgoers to get involved. So in this video, I'll unpack how that formula works and we'll show you how to apply it as we prepare church announcement scripts on the fly for your upcoming events. <laughs> Well, hey there, and welcome to Pro Church Tools, the show to help you share the message of Jesus while we navigate the biggest communication shift in 500 years. I'm your host, Alex Mills, joined as always by Brady Shearer. There's a church announcement formula that we've been teaching for a couple of years now. It's very simple. It's two parts. First part is one story. The second part is one next step. There you go. Simple equation. Not simple so formula. One story plus one next step. With that being said, we have noticed that some people have difficulty applying this formula in the real world. So I got on Instagram stories uh, yesterday mm -hmm. and I sent out a question post. And I said, hey, what's an upcoming event or service or promotion that your church is having that you want to announce and communicate to your church? Send it and we're going to prepare some, uh, some scripts using this formula on the fly to show you how awesome. it can apply to any single event. And there was like a couple hundred responses. What I did was I categorized- So you wrote a couple them. hundred announcements. Yep, yep. <laughs> Haven't been in the office in two months. Uh, <laughs> I took them and I categorized them okay. into different groupings that I thought made sense. Sure. And then I created a series of story frameworks that I would use for these announcements. Because what you have to do is you have to do this over mm -hmm. and over and over again, mm -hmm. which is what can make it difficult. You feel like I'm running out of stories. One thing to do with that is to have an ongoing Evernote anytime you notice an anecdote or a story in your life that you think this might be Useful. something that comes in handy yeah. in the future. Write it down in your yes. Evernote. You won't need it now, but you will in the future. And when you sit down Saturday night, come on, you procrastinated <laughs> to write these announcements. You're like, I don't have anything. And then you're in trouble. But if you've got a whole Evernote to resource to, yep. you're good to go. Yeah. So, why does the formula exist in the way that it does? One story plus one next step. Why are we not talking about the itinerary, the details, the location info, the price, the time, the date, who's invited, who's coming, who's not invited? The reason is because we want, the goal with our church announcements is for people to get involved, move from passive spectators to active participants. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. How do we do, how do, we do that? We inspire them. Yeah. Inspiration over information. Story is the most powerful form of human communication. Why? Well, because it forces us to pay attention. You might not be tuned into this talk that I'm giving right now. I start telling a story. You tune uh, You perk up. You start yeah. listening because story is the most ancient way of communicating Jesus in his teachings. More than 35% of the time was using story to communicate the most important things that humanity has ever heard. So yep. if it's good enough for Jesus, it's good <laughs> enough for us. And then one next step. What we always say is we say head to lifeabundant.info or visit the lifeabundant.info kiosk in the lobby. That is the one next step that we give every single time. Mm -hmm. Now, why do we do this? We do this because consistency allows people to know where to go when they need to go. Yeah. What we don't do is we don't say talk to Pastor Carl. We don't say call the church office. We don't say check the bulletin. We don't say download the app. We don't say, hey, email the ministry leader. We don't give all of these different options because what that does is it makes it difficult to remember that event. Am, am I supposed to call the office or am I supposed to talk to the pastor? Mm -hmm. or am I supposed to check the website? Am I supposed to download the app? Maybe that was the thing that was only available on the app because I know <laughs> the app and website are connected. Right. <laughs> you create a single next step for every single promotion, every single time, over and over and over again. So that way, when Alex is, you know, it's a Wednesday and he's like, okay, I wanted to attend this event. He knows because it's the same for every single event, mm -hmm. promotion, service, go to lifeabundant.info or the lifeabundant.info kiosk in the lobby if you're there on a Sunday morning. Yeah, and this is the central hub philosophy put into action, right? Having one central location for every next step at your church. Because we know, backed up by data, that when people are presented with a bunch of choices, they're actually less likely to make a choice. And so the reason you're making an announcement in the first place is because you're hosting an event, a small group, a service, whatever it is, and you think it's so important that you want people to participate in it. And if you want people to participate, that means they have to take that next step. They have to actually get out their door and come to this event. And so we need to make it as easy as possible for folks to do this. So having this central hub, this one location for every next step is perfect because even if I'm not at church, even if I don't hear that announcement, 
I know where to go. I know, hey, I heard they're having a fall festival. I wasn't in the room for the announcement, but I know where to go. So one single location for every next step. This happened in real life the other day at your church picnic yeah. because I wanted to attend. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll just text my friend and Pastor Alex. I was like, you know what? I'll just go to lifeabundant.info. There you go. And there was the information that I needed because I'm a grown adult. And I can find <laughs> the information myself. Right. The reason that we use a website for this is because we want it to be available 24-7. Mm-hmm. That bulletin, it might be great on a Sunday morning if you hand it to somebody, but is it likely they have it on Wednesday when they need it? Yeah. No. If they call the church office, what if the office hours are not Mm -hmm. open. What if you email and they don't get back to you right away? A self-serve option that's available 24-7 is what you need, which is why we use a website. The final piece to bring this all together is the 50% rule. Once we get through this, we'll get into the actual scripts. We've got to create the framework that makes sense for you. The 50% rule is simple. If an announcement does not apply to 50% or more of the people in attendance when you're announcing it, so on a Sunday morning, Mm -hmm. It does not warrant an announcement from stage. This is amazing for cutting down on the overall number of announcements, Mm -hmm. which is important because if you're going to use this formula, which is one story plus one next step for your church announcements, you got to have less announcements because stories take longer than simply reeling off the details, location, info, price, and time and date. So if you start implementing this formula, and you're still doing your six, seven, eight announcements every single week, you're going to be in trouble yeah. when the announcements are longer than the message. And we know you're already in trouble. We know your announcement section is already 15 minutes too long. Yeah. So we got to cut it back. We cut that back by cutting back the announcements. But that doesn't mean that you can't inform your church about those events still. Right, because the pushback that we hear is like, well, then how are they ever going to hear <laughs> right. about this unique niche event that's only for a small group of people? Right. Well, thankfully, there are so many different ways that you can communicate beyond a Sunday morning announcement. Mm -hmm. You can use email lists, Facebook groups, Facebook Messenger, group chat, text, social media, the bulletin. There are so many different options. Heck, the central hub would be a great option where people can get their information on their own terms Mm -hmm. like grown adults. (laughs) And people will push back on that and be like, well, none of those are perfect solutions. Do you think announcements are perfect (laughs) solutions? David is sleeping during your announcements. First of all, no one listens because your announcements are boring. We're going to fix that in a moment. Secondly, people don't attend church every single week. Thirdly, do you think they can remember the location info that you're using? (laughs) Oh yeah, this is happening April 23rd. These are the eight different things that you need to know. No one can remember that. So what's going to happen? They're going to come up after service anyway. Be like, hey, what was that thing yeah, you said? Did, you, did, I, you, wasn't there did I hear you mention oh. something about some sort of fall? Oh. I don't know. Oh. You could have the most, frankly, exciting announcements with the most respectful and attention-giving congregation. Mm-hmm. And if all you did was share information that people need to attend events, yeah. they couldn't remember it. Humans do not have this computer-like memory where right. we can just obtain and then store all of that information. We need a place that we can get it on demand sure. when we need it. So, There's no perfect solution. If you're worried that cutting down on your announcements will mean that you can't share your information, well, firstly, you can share it in all these different ways. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, it's not like announcements are this like cure-all because they're not. We know it's not working currently. Yeah. This is the announcements framework that we suggest. One story plus one next step is the formula for scripting, for deciding what gets a Sunday announcement, a stage announcement, the 50% rule. Now, How are we going to implement and use this formula? We've got four different categories here. The first category is what I call the new people category. It also works great for volunteers. Here are some of the responses that we got from Pro Church Nation. We've got a newcomers class, a connect lunch for new people, growth track, Mm -hmm. next steps, pizza with the pastors. It's all very similar. I want to go to that event. Pizza with the pastors? Yeah. Ooh, it's classic. Well, you are the pastor. Yeah. So you could just eat pizza and be like, I'm hosting pizza with the pastors, (laughs) Rebecca. Care to join me? I'd come. Put this on the church card. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Hey, pizza with the pastors, okay? Hey. So the story framework that I love to use For this specific category, which is the new people category, but also works great for volunteers and acquiring volunteers, is what I call the live Q&A. Do it with someone who has gone through this before. Mm -hmm. The reason that we do this is because for those that are new and for those that are being recruited to be volunteers, those are huge steps to take. If you're new and attending a service, it's a huge step to like attend a oh, new yeah. here class. That's massive. If you are the person that attends church, you know, every other week or every fourth week, and now people are saying, hey, would you serve in our kids ministry? Mm-hmm. Those are huge steps. So 
in my experience, one of the best things that you can do is to do a live Q&A or share the story of someone that's actually done this before. Right. So we do this at Central all the time where we'll bring up a kid's volunteer and I'll just ask questions with them as the host, as the person that's doing the announcement. I'm like, so why did you get into kids ministry in the first place? Mm-hmm. What's what, what have been some of the highlights? And what are the things that you care about most? What would you say to someone that's considering being a volunteer? And what this does is it draws on real life experience. So it's almost like in-person social proof. Yeah. There's a reason that Amazon reviews are so important. There's a reason every time I consider buying a product on Amazon, I go straight to the reviews to make sure, okay, are other people enjoying this? Mm-hmm. Before I'm willing to commit to being a volunteer in kids ministry, what is the experience of other people? Right. That helps a lot. Yeah, so for me, sitting in the congregation thinking that, oh, I'd, I'd really like to get into youth ministry, I can see someone who has already taken that next step, already taken that what feels like a leap, right? Because this is my first hmm. time. I've never volunteered at this church before. I don't really know these people all that well. They've already taken this leap, and now I'm getting to hear about the the reward, the how they feel, how much they love it, how much life it's given them, their experience with the kids. This is a step worth taking, and so after after you interview that person, ask them a few questions, you throw that next step. And we have some openings for uh, for children's volunteer, whatever. Uh, you can sign up at lifeabundant.info. Yep, exactly. That's how it looks. Second category is the annual event category. Upcoming fall retreat, youth retreat, VBS, fall festival, fall fiesta. Mm men or women or student conference, marriage retreats, the annual church picnic. Yep. So you get the annual event category. It's that thing that isn't uh, in a weekly or monthly basis, but it is something that you do every single year. Uh, uh, one leader, one response. Please don't read this out no, loud. No, this one I have to say. So I don't know if they were joking or if they were serious. They said, uh, we want to call our fall retreat the Holy Ghost Weenie Roast. <laughs> No amount of inspiration, no amount of story. I can't no, fix this. There is not a next step compelling enough to get me to go to the Holy Ghost weenie roast. <laughs> I tend to agree. I tend to agree here. All right. Holy Ghost weenie roast aside, <laughs> story framework number two. For this category of events, those annual event type uh, thingies, Yep. I like to use memories from last year. Sure. So this draws on nostalgia, which is really great. Um, the reason that people will not come to an event like this, in their mind, as you announce it, they'll immediately start to think, you know, I've got a busy schedule. I've got things, you know, I, it's one thing to commit to church, but this is on a Thursday night. This yeah. is on a Friday night. Heck, this is for a whole weekend. It's a retreat. It's a conference. I don't have time. If you can tap into nostalgia and the fact that everyone had so much fun last year mm-hmm. with a story, it kind of creates a little bit of FOMO in people that are like, man, it was so fun last year. I don't want to miss out. Oh yeah. yeah, that was fun last year. That's an amazing way to incentivize people to Sign up. Mm-hmm. So, uh, okay. You had your annual church picnic. Yep. I've been doing a lot of hitting you today. That's so, okay. You know, I'll just be like, um, okay. so if you were announcing the annual church picnic and I was there so I can actually draw on a bit of experience yeah. here, what I would have done was I would have said, hey, we've got our annual church picnic coming up, really the third best Sunday <laughs> of the year. Yep. And you know, we're doing it like we do every year. We're doing the shoe kick challenge. Is that yes. what you guys call it? Yeah. The shoe kick challenge. So what we do is we all line up and- You take your shoe, you untie it a little bit, Mm -hmm. you loosen it up a bit, and you kick that shoe off of your foot as far as it can go. You could level up this announcement and actually do that on stage. You could show, like, oh, here's (laughs) what it actually looks (laughs) like. Maybe you have some footage from last year that you can show and say, we're going to do this uh, crazy. And and you explain it. Now, for those that don't know how this happens, then you demonstrate, you show the footage, and that's the entire announcement. Yeah. if you need information on the church picnic, head to lifeabundant.info. For our church picnic, we always appeal to the kids because we rent a huge bouncy castle for the kids and the kids love it, right? The church picnic is all about the kids. There's fun and games. And so I always say like- I brought my kid. Yeah, like, hey kids, you remember that uh, bouncy castle last year? That was good, right? What if we got a bigger one? See you next Sunday. <laughs> got him. Because you know, if you get the kids, you got the parents. <laughs> oh, that's facts. I mean, that's church 101, really. Uh, so- This is easy because there's always something to draw on from the year before. What I tried to do with these frameworks is to make most of them easy. The live Q&A is really easy once you've actually acquired the individual who's willing to do it because you don't have to script anything. You're just going to ask them questions and Mm -hmm. then riff from there. With this one, we all have great memories of events from the past. So just bring those up again. Push for that one next step. Third category, this is the small groups category. Maybe you call it a community group, a life group, home group, Red group, 
Holy Ghost Weenie Roast group. <laughs> so for this story we framework. We have weekly Holy Ghost Weenie Roasts. Now there's a church I would <laughs> be interested in attending. For this story framework, uh, I thought the social media highlight fits in here. We've been talking about this a bit over the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, so here's what you could do. Here's the script. Uh, This week on social media, we asked our church, what's your favorite summertime activity? Chrissy said camping. Amy said heading to the mountains. Chris said heading to the beach. Well, guess what? And then you make the transition into your life groups, your small groups. These would be, you know, affinity groups that are based around an interest rather than like an in-home Bible study. Mm -hmm. Um, Here's another example using a social media highlight. This week on social media, we asked, what's one of the biggest life changes you've experienced in the last five years? And then you go through what a couple of people said and be like, look, going through life alone, it's just no way to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have life groups here. You make the transition, point to the one next step. Here's a final one. This week on social media, we asked you to eliminate one food forever, pizza, tacos, hamburgers, or chicken wings. And you all were wrong because chicken wings <laughs> is the definitive answer, which means we will not be serving chicken wings in yeah. small groups this week. But if you want to get... So this does a couple of things. It brings social media into a Sunday oh, service, yeah. which we think is great. Creates this cycle of you're getting engaged with social through the week, and then you're talking about those engagements you had on Sunday, yeah. and that means more people are following and engaging on social throughout the week, and you're seizing the 167, but the one out of the 168, that Sunday service is also a lot of fun. Yeah. And that's the story you're using to get people involved in small groups. And each of these three questions are real questions that churches have asked. And yeah. I included real responses from real people that commented. And I use that to script an entire announcement. And that's a story. When we say story, we don't necessarily mean like Lord of the Rings, like beginning, <laughs> middle, end. Uh, yeah. It can just be an anecdote. It can just be, sure. hey, we were doing this funny thing in the office this week, X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And then the one next step. This one's great because, and we've talked about this recently as well. You could throw that social post up on the screen, like bring a visual element in and show that post, show the feedback. And then people in the congregation, if they aren't interacting with that, they're going to see that be like, hold on. They're making judgments off of what we do at small group based off the feedback they get on social. Like I need to start, I need to start responding to these questions I see on social because I really like chicken wings and I wish there would be chicken wings at small group this week, but I didn't answer. So... That's on me. Well, my endless pursuit to get more pie integrated <laughs> into church. That's right. Dessert pie. Yeah. You could ask this question, which we did on social. We asked you, what's your favorite pie? And the biggest response for this one church was pecan and apple. Okay. Like those are the wrong answers, uh. but whatever you, for this individual church, you could say, guess what? All small groups this week are going to have apple and pecan pie yeah. because that feedback. So now not only are you using that as a story. You're getting pie. I mean, right. So like that. What would you prefer? <laughs> Holy Ghost Weenie Roast or pie at small groups? Yes. Hey, we're going to ask that on social yeah, what media. What kind of person do you want to say? Be? Yeah. Final category, the one-off event category. So sure. this is not the annual event that happens every single year that you can draw nostalgia on. Right. It's not a ministry like a small group that's based in community where you can use like social media community to transition into real life community. Mm, right. And it's not something that you can do a live Q&A about because it's a one-off event that maybe has never happened before. Now, you could still probably use the Q&A if you wanted. Yeah. For these, let's say a men's breakfast, a kid's pool party, paint night for young adults, back-to-school bingo bash. A weenie roast. Prayer and worship night. A worship night. (laughs) Guest speaker, (laughs) Holy Spirit encounter slash weenie roast night of worship. Yeah. For these types of events, I love to use the personal anecdote or story. So let's use the men's breakfast as an example. Let's say I'm the host. Mm -hmm. I have a belief that bacon as a food is highly overrated. Do I like bacon? Sure. Has it ascended to heights where it does not belong? Yes. I would use that as the story to infuriate (laughs) everyone and then say, want to fight about it? I'll see you at men's breakfast. I want to fight you about that right now. See, exactly. But that's (laughs) something that's true. I'm not just saying it to get people upset. I can talk about how I never have bacon in my home because it is overrated and I can get it everywhere. Why do I need to pay my own money to get bacon? What a joke. It's so high in fat. The macro profile is not whatsoever healthy. You put it in a pan, it shrinks and shrivels. It's so hard to get it to the right cooking it's, it's either too like rubbery it's like all like brains but then you get it just crispy enough and then suddenly it's too crispy and it falls apart when you bite it joke of a food anyway we've got a men's breakfast coming up want to learn more <laughs> i'll be there head to life you're gonna get me there just fight you but i mean i'm gonna be there one way or another 
Let's do one for the paint night okay. for young adults. Recently, I was at a church let me, picnic. Let me think. Painting is overrated. First of all, <laughs> no, just, just uh, I was at a church picnic at Alex's yeah. church, and all of the kids, because Alex incentivizes kids to come to church picnics Got to get them. their adults. That's right. I call kids their adults. <laughs> yes, not their parents. They're adults. <laughs> they're adults. <laughs> so my daughter won this glitter sidewalk chalk paint. Okay. There's a lot of things. And we won when my wife was out of town. So I let my daughter take this glitter chalk paint and she takes it on the sidewalk and she basically just pours it everywhere. Yeah. So my wife comes home. She's like, why is there slime all over <laughs> the deck? And I was like, slime? What happened? She's like, the whole deck is ruined. I was like, oh, sweetie, once I saw it. Yeah. That's just glitter that's, chalk paint. That's art. Absolutely. Yeah. Your daughter was just painting. <laughs> Now, if you want to do some painting in a more controlled environment yeah. as a young adult, we've got it. So that's just a thing that happened last week. Sure. And that's, I had, that's just life. That's, that's life. Like, yeah. it's, like that's not even a good, like, that's not a story that's worth really even telling. <laughs> right. You don't need to tell that ever again. <laughs> you had never heard it before. Right. And you got a good chuckle about yeah. it. You know, you present these as a fun story and, and people are listening. They're engaged. Yeah. Like, what happened when the wife got home and she saw all of the glitter chalk paint? Yeah, my husband does that too. I leave for one day. <laughs> the whole house is a mess. Classic husbands. Am I right? Am I right? Classic yeah. husbands. Yeah. If you have a husband, that's a problem. <laughs> Our marriage retreat is coming, but we got him again. See? So many different directions that you could take that. Yeah. Uh, if you have a guest speaker that's coming in, you can like lean on your existing relationship with that mm -hmm. person. So instead of talking about their accolades, people always do this, like, you know, eight-time yeah, Grammy-nominated right. singer-songwriter yeah. slash preacher slash traveling prophet is going to be here yeah. on the services of May 25th. 26th, the morning of the 27th on the Sunday morning at the 9, 11, and 1230 <laughs> service. Like, okay, come on. Who even is it? Yeah. You could replace that by just saying, oh, I was emailing back and forth with our our our, our friend and, and, you know, our church's friend, you know, Jim Brown, whoever. It might, might be. It's a fake name. Mm -hmm. Not the football player. I think Jim Brown was a football player. I don't know. It's like we're emailing back and forth. And, you know, we were talking about the last time that he or she was here. And it was so fun. X, Y, and Z. That is just a recount of an email exchange, yeah. and that can be the entire subject sure. for the announcement. Yeah. And then there really isn't a next step there to point to, but just say, hey, it's coming up soon. Service times, look forward to that. Yeah, I mean, to someone who's never used this kind of story framework um, in presenting announcements before, it may sound like, oh, where am I going to get all these stories from? But you just gave us like three like really ridiculous examples of like really lame stories that all did their job, right? Like this is just life that is happening every day. You do not have to go searching for these kinds of anecdotes. They, if you look for them, they are there. They are there in abundance. And just that, that use of an anecdote is so much more effective. We've talked about it, storytelling being the most effective form of human uh, communication. Just, just switching it up and using an anecdote as opposed to trying to describe what the event is going to be like, or like you said, just listing off accolades, that's going to result in a lot more attention being paid in that moment, and therefore a lot more next steps being taken. You might think that this is a foreign thing that you haven't done before. Trust me, it is foreign to get on stage and to just list off right. details, yeah, that doesn't happen anywhere and else, <laughs> and hope people come. Yeah, we are all wired to tell and hear stories. You've been doing it since you were a small child. Mm -hmm. I guarantee it. So it might feel a bit foreign at first, documenting it all and like preparing it. But when it actually comes to the Sunday morning and you're just telling that story, it's going to feel more natural than ever before. When you did announcements where you're just trying to remember all of the details. Yeah. And guess what? It's going to be much more enjoyable for your congregation to listen to. So you won't be conditioning them week over week to ignore your announcements, especially because you'll be following the 50% rule mm -hmm. and that gets to the goal. It'll result in more people getting involved, taking next steps, which is the whole point of this entire framework yeah. to begin with. So hopefully this is helpful, taking your real events and your real services and your real upcoming things that you're doing at church and creating announcement frameworks for them. Put them into action. Let us know how it works. Mm -hmm. And that'll do it for this episode of Pro Church Tools Weenie Roast. We'll see you next time. That's all for this video, but there's going to be another one, so subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. And before you go to the next one, you still have one more thing to do for this one. You got to tell us, did you like it or did you like it?